Hi guys, this is Nick from Slate Pro Audio, and today I'm going to explain to you the Raven MTI. The Raven MTI is the world's first multi-touch DAW controller software. It'll work with Pro Tools, Logic, Nuendo, Cubase, all the bit major DAWs. It allows multi-touch control over your entire work surface. So as you can see, here's Pro Tools right in front of us, and our software lays right on top. It allows you to control faders, solos, mutes. You can load plugins on it. So you can see, I can load any plugin I'd like, and it'll appear on the screen in a big size, which I can also control with my finger. It allows editing features such as zooming in and out. I can select things. I can also write automation with my fingers. As such, see that. And that's a really useful tool. Sometimes you don't want to mouse around with a, with a mouse to get automation. You want to draw it with your finger. It's, it's very, very nice. If we go back to our Raven mixer, right here, you can select icons for your, for your tracks. And eventually, we're going to have it so where you can take a picture of whatever piece of gear you're using and put it right there, right in your mixer so you know where it's at. You can select automation modes. You have sweep solo. Five milliseconds. If that and sounds fast, it's it's same function to fast. turn it all off. And you also have a fine fader, fader mode. So let's say smoother. these faders are very fast and reactive, but if you want to get those minus, you know, very, very small increments, hit fine fader mode, and it'll go very, very short. You can also access fine fader mode by hitting the DB, hitting the DB display, and you can get individual control of the fine fader mode. And that's just a little bit about what this thing can actually do. This is a software uh, application, so it can always be updated and always new ideas thrown at it and developed farther and farther. This is only the beginning. So that's a little rundown of the Raven MTI. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Same thing with your eyes. A plug-in compressor suite called the virtual bus compressors. So what we did is we studied these analog compressors and we created three really versatile mixed bus compressors that will be useful for a lot of different styles of music. Let's talk about them real quick. This first one is called the FG4014. Now this one we want it to be super clean and transparent. So it's a picture of a transparent signal path like with really high slew rate amplifiers, super clean, super punchy, but very clean. It doesn't add a sonic odor to your mix. So this will be perfect for mastery. Or if you have a mix that sounds good, we just want a little bit of tightening in the bottom end. This is a really cool, clean compressor that you can use in a series with other compressors. Very tight, very clean, adds a lot of glue. Now this second compressor here is one of my favorite compressors of all time. This is what got me mixing inside the box completely. Because I was patching in a Focusrite Red 3, even though I was mixing in the box using our VCC and VTM, as for recently, I was still patching in a hardware compressors for, all, for my mix bus. This is the 8014. It combines two of my favorite compressors topologies. One is the SSL 4000, and the second one is the Focusrite Red 3. So we took the, the bottom end transformer sound of the Focusrite Red, Red 3, and the grab and the punch of the SSL, and we combined the two of those together. So what does the 8014 sound like? It's punchy as hell. It's aggressive, it's punchy, it's fat, it adds a nice thickness to the bottom end. It's great for rock, metal, country, pop, hip-hop, dance, anything. Now we added some cool features to all the compressors which make it even more versatile. We added a high-pass filter in the detection. So if you want to tighten up your mix but you want the, the bottom end to, to remain big and, and open, you can put the high-pass filter up. It's amazing for rock, it's amazing for dance mixes. You know, if you're compressing a dance or electronic music mix or hip-hop, you can increase that high-pass filter and get a super big bottom end sound. We also have a mix knob, so you can compress something pretty hard and then blend the compressed signal with the dry signal. So again, more versatility. A lot of these features are not in the hardware compressors. They're certainly not a mix feature or a high-pass filter 
going to necessarily sell over the focus right. We also have a drive control to 8014. It's so badass. It basically simulates overdriving the input and the output transformer emulations. It makes things sound thicker, meatier, a little more hair on it, as you'd say in the studio business. So it's a really great compressor, super analog sounding. You can compress hard, it keeps all the same vibe. Really wonderful compressor for lots of uh, types of, uh, of music. The third compressor, another favorite of mine, it's called the FG Moo. And as you can probably tell from the name, it's a variable Moo emulated compressor. It kind of has aspects of the classic Fairchild. It has aspects of the newer stuff like the Manly Barry Moo. And then it has some recent nice own little uh, flavor to it. How does it sound? Well, first of all, it's going through a very fat tube stage. The bottom end gets fatter, the bottom end compresses more, the mid-range kind of gets a little thicker and more harmonically rich. The top end comes out in this smooth and glossy type of way. It adds a lot of air to the sound. It's amazing on rock. In fact, I have that compressor on this mix right now. It's great for rock, country, hip-hop, everything. You want that, a bigger, fatter sound. So it's three compressors. You can use all three of them in a series, and you can even change the order Order. So if I wanted, for instance, if I want to use the Moo, and I want to go through the Moo first, then I want to go through a little bit of 8014, you can mix and match which one to go through. And you can, what's the advantage also of having three compressors in one rack? Well, one is you can A, B, C between them, find out which is the best suited for that mix. Two is you can go in a series, compress a little with each of them. I mean, there's no rules here, guys. You can do whatever you need. And you can also have an A-B switch, so you can quickly A-B between two different two different settings on one compressor and so on. So this is the Virtual Bus Compressor. We've been working really hard on this thing because we want to actually do something new with plug-in compressors. We want guys to use this and go, and this thing sounds analog. We want you to be able to compress and squash really hard and still have all that harmonically rich analog type of sound. But it sounds good. So that is the Virtual Bus Compressors. It will be out shortly. And uh, for Reese, do you want to talk about more about the modeling uh, yeah, analog absolutely. processes? Uh, what was interesting is that we wanted to, uh, to mix several uh, kind of uh, compressors. We wanted to have the analog behavior, but we also wanted to be creative. So not only you will have the character of some very famous original pieces in the BBC, but you will have more and you will be able to go further, not only uh, with, the, with the mix and the iPass filter, but also with the drive in the 8410. And what what is very, was very interesting for me when I developed the algorithm was I was able to remove all the, the analog emulation that I, that I featured in the algorithm. Let me explain what that means. So in, in the compressor algorithm, like I said, we have just the basic compressor topology, which is how the attack and release speeds work, how the ratio and the threshold interacts, and then we have all the nonlinear artifacts. That's on a separate algorithm module. So what he's saying is we can actually bypass just the artifacts. Go ahead. Exactly. So I can bypass all the, just the artifacts and, and then thus just have the, you know, a very regular digital compressor algorithm. And I realized that, you know, it's the same way. I have the same I have the same behavior, same timing, attack and release, but it sounded lifeless, you know, all the crunch was gone. And then that's pretty strange to say something about crunch, because you can use really, really, uh, you know, strong compression, really big compression, so you have a sense of a uh, 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 drum bug that you can use really strong crunch, you can make it hard, and you know, it has a lot of energy, and you may think, oh, anyway, that is going to be crushed. With an analog compressor, it is not true. With an analog compressor, you still have some punch, you still have some light. The problem with a digital compressor without any artifacts is that it, it exactly uses the limiter on, on your uh, bad limiter on your on your drum track. You know, it loses all the transient, it loses all the light, and it sounds bad. It sounds, you know, like where where is my punch? And even though you compress a lot, you want to reduce your uh, your your peaks, but you still want to keep that aura. You still want to hear the punch, and that was great with the BBC. Even though you crank it up, even you even though you really have a lot.
lot of angry to shot. You know, you still feel the touch. That's the main point here about all the these algorithms. So again, the VBC is going to be available very soon. And you're going to notice a difference when you're using this on your mix. You're going to be able to compress. You're going to hear your transients come out in a way that will remind you of like using the old analog gear. And it was a real discovery for us because you'd be surprised at how many plug-in compressors, even ones that claim to be emulating a specific analog piece, but didn't have any harmonic artifacts at all in their algorithms. And also you can hear it really quickly in the sound. You know, as soon as you, you, you really get a lot of gain reduction, the sound is really dead. And yeah, it's like dead, flat, don't have anything, you know, to do with music anymore. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, go ahead. We'll, we'll take questions from anyone now. Arnold,